At the end of their lives, most massive stars erupt in violent supernova explosions, blasting their outer layers into space. What remains is an extraordinarily dense core, a neutron star, packed with matter so tightly that a single teaspoon would weigh billions of tons. Some of these remnants spin rapidly, unleashing powerful beams of radio waves from their magnetic poles, sweeping across the cosmos like cosmic lighthouses. As these neutron stars rotate, their intense radio beams swing through space, and when one aligns with Earth, we detect it as a rhythmic pulse of radio waves. Their precise, clockwork-like flashing led astronomers to call them pulsars. Now, most pulsars rotate at staggering speeds, sometimes spinning hundreds of times per second. But recently, in a groundbreaking discovery, astronomers have spotted a strange object sending out radio pulses at unusually slower intervals. This object takes a leisurely 6.5 hours to complete just one rotation. You know, it's like finding a hummingbird that flaps its wings as slowly as an eagle. It's just too bizarre and challenges existing theories about neutron stars and their limits. Published in Nature Astronomy, this is the first time such a phenomenon has been observed in an object spinning at such a sluggish pace. Welcome to territory. This is your space. Recently, astronomers using the ASCAP radio telescope in Australia were conducting a routine observation when they detected an object emitting unexpected radio waves. The strange thing stood out because no previously known object had been identified at its position. But this was just the beginning. The more scientists examined it, the stranger the object seemed to be. During the initial observation, astronomers detected just one solitary burst, which appeared to fade quickly, with its brightness plummeting by 95% in just 15 minutes. A long ASCAP observation eventually revealed two pulses separated by 6.5 hours, confirming the periodic nature of the source. The real surprise is that, based on our understanding of neutron stars, ASCAP J1839756 shouldn't even exist. Because neutron stars generate radio pulses by turning their rotational energy into radiation. As they age, they gradually lose energy and slow down. But ASCAP J1839 defies this, spinning just once every 6.5 hours and still sending out signals. Now, most pulsars are like one-sided flashlights, as in the axis they spin around is closely aligned to the axis of their magnetic field, which means we only see flashes from one magnetic pole. But in about 3% of pulsars, the rotational and magnetic axes are nearly at right angles to each other, allowing us to see pulses from both poles. ASCAP J1839 seems to fall into this category. And this brings us to the question, what could be driving this cosmic mystery? One possibility is a magnetar, a neutron star with an incredibly intense magnetic field far stronger than anything we can generate on Earth. These magnetic giants emit radio pulses through a unique process, which might explain how they can continue emitting even at slower spin rates. Yet, even magnetars have their limits, with typical rotations measured in seconds, not hours. So could ASCAP J1839 be something entirely different? Regardless of what ASCAP J1839756 turns out to be, it's clear that the object has captured our attention and further observations will reveal its true nature. What do you guys think? Comment below to let me know. Black holes, the universe's ultimate conundrum, cosmic objects so powerful that not even light can escape their grasp. They challenge everything we think we know about gravity, space, and time. And yet, they may hold the answers to the deepest mysteries of the cosmos. While a lot of attention has been given to supermassive, intermediate, and stellar black holes, there is an even bigger puzzle. Primordial black holes, cosmic bullets, believed to have formed shortly after the Big Bang. Unlike their stellar giant counterparts that arise from collapsing stars, these black holes would have formed at the dawn of time itself, potentially as small as atoms or as large as mountains. Scientists have long speculated that these ancient black holes, scattered throughout the fabric of space-time, might be the elusive dark matter that makes up most of the universe but remains invisible to us. Moreover, primordial black holes may help explain some of the strange signals we've picked up in recent years. For example, the gravitational waves detected by observatories like LIGO 
might not just come from the collision of large black holes or neutron stars, but from ancient tiny black holes merging together. This would mean that these small black holes are traveling throughout the universe. A recent study even suggests that our universe might be filled with these microscopic black holes, each about the size of an atom, but carrying the mass of an asteroid. And some of them could be on a path that brings them near us within this decade. They could be passing through the solar system every decade, unseen but potentially causing subtle disruptions. One popular theory even links these tiny black holes to the 1908 Tunguska event, where a massive explosion flattened over 2,000 square kilometers of forest near the Tunguska River in Siberia. While popular theories suggest that the explosion was caused by the airburst of a meteoroid or a comet fragment entering Earth's atmosphere, no impact crater was found. And the explosion is estimated to have released energy equivalent to 10 to 15 megatons of TNT, about 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. This has led some scientists to argue that such an event could have been triggered by a micro black hole passing through Earth. But this too remains a hypothesis for now. However, scientists believe we may be on the verge of finding the answer. They propose that if primordial black holes exist, they most definitely do not reside within the solar system. Instead, they pass through it at various angles every decade or so. Traveling at speeds over 7,000 times the speed of sound, these black hole bullets might even influence celestial bodies in our star system. For context, let's see what would happen if a primordial black hole passed near a human body. A black hole with the mass of an asteroid would push a person several meters in an instant. The scary part, they wouldn't even know what hit them. Fortunately, the odds of such an encounter are nearly zero, but it gives us an idea of the force these tiny black holes could exert if they pass through a larger object like a planet, say Mars. The idea is that if these black holes pass close enough to Mars, their presence could cause a slight wobble, a subtle shift in the planet's orbit. This shift would be small, but measurable, and the data could help confirm or refute the hypothesis that these black holes contribute to dark matter. But we will get into the link between primordial black holes and dark matter another time. For now, however, some scientists aren't very sure about these little bullets. They argue that primordial black holes should have evaporated by now due to Hawking radiation, a theoretical process where black holes slowly lose mass and eventually disappear. To settle this debate, researchers are focusing on tracking Mars's orbit with high precision. Because we can measure the distance between Earth and Mars to within centimeters, any deviation caused by a black hole flyby might be detectable. The search for these tiny black holes could be also aided by our long-term observations of asteroids and other objects in the solar system. Scientists have studied space rocks for decades, so comparing their typical trajectories with those of potential black holes could help distinguish between ordinary objects and primordial black holes. However, detecting a black hole's influence remains a challenge and would require some luck to spot a clear signal. For decades, modern astronomy has held to a popular belief that the powerful jets responsible for the most energetic forms of radiation, gamma rays, originate from the distant cores of galaxies, far beyond our reach. But what if these extraordinary forces were lurking closer to home? In the shadow of an ancient Mexican volcano, the High Altitude Water Cherenkov Gamma Ray Observatory, or HAWK for short, has discovered something fascinating. Equipped with 300 water-filled tanks, this observatory captures gamma photons at staggering energies. And now its detectors have revealed something astonishing, something that challenges decades of scientific thought, something right in our cosmic backyard, pointed directly at us. Quasars, rare supermassive black holes found at the center of galaxies pulling in material and emitting intense radiation and powerful jets. Scientists estimate that the last time Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy became a quasar, was about 6 to 9 million years ago. Since then, it has gone quiet as it aged, but the remnants of that quasar ejection are still present, above and below the ecliptic of the spiral Milky Way disk. Today, the closest quasar to Earth resides in Markarian 231, a Type 1 safer galaxy located 581 million light-years from Earth. 
and the jets launched by active quasars like Markarian-231 release electromagnetic radiation of extremely high energies. These energy particles, which are primarily high-energy protons and atomic nuclei, can reach incredibly high speeds when traveling through space, sometimes almost approaching the speed of light. Since Victor Hess discovered cosmic radiation in 1912, Astronomers have believed that supernova remnants in our galaxy are responsible for accelerating these particles to the highest energies. However, a different picture comes from the latest data from the Hawk Observatory. The sources of radiation of extremely high energies in our galaxy turn out to be microquasars. These are compact binary systems consisting of a massive star and a black hole that consumes its matter, producing jets that can extend for hundreds of light years. Dozens of such microquasars have been discovered in our galaxy to date. But what the Hawk Observatory's detectors have captured are photons originating from a microquasar within our galaxy that possess energies tens of thousands of times greater than what is typically observed. The microquasar V4641 Sagittarii has been identified as the source of photons with energies reaching up to 200 tera electron volts. Located in the Sagittarius constellation, it is approximately 20,000 light years from Earth. A black hole with a mass around six times that of the Sun plays a central role in pulling in matter from a giant star that is three solar masses. These two objects orbit a shared center of mass, completing one revolution in just under three days. Interestingly, the jet produced by the V4641 system points toward our solar system. Consequently, the jet seems to move through space at a velocity exceeding light speed, in this case, up to nine times the speed of light. In astrophysics, superluminal motion occurs when jets of material are ejected at speeds close to the speed of light and are pointed nearly directly at us. Because the jet's motion is directed toward the observer, the light from the jet reaches the observer in such a way that it appears to be moving faster than the speed of light. This is not a violation of physics but a trick of perspective. This discovery demonstrates that at a relatively close distance to Earth, the mechanisms responsible for jet formation and the generation of ultra-energetic photons are similar to those observed in quasars in distant galaxies. The only difference is that these activities in microquasars unfold over a much more relatable timescale, days as opposed to the hundreds of thousands or millions of years typically involved. This development means that astrophysicists can for the first time conduct detailed and nearly unobstructed observations of techniques vital to galaxy evolution. Imagine floating through our cosmic neighborhood, where our sun and planets are cradled within an enormous, mysterious bubble, a swath of space that scientists call the local hot bubble. It's a sprawling region of low-density gas, stretching hundreds of light years in all directions, heated to millions of degrees. But how did this bizarre bubble come to be? Scientists believe that around 10 million years ago, multiple star explosions or supernovae occurred in this region. Research suggests that around 14 million years ago, powerful supernovae erupted, carving out a bubble of hot gas called the local bubble. Over time, this bubble expanded, sweeping up clouds of interstellar gas and dust along its surface. As centuries passed, these clouds condensed, giving birth to thousands of new stars. Our sun was far from this event when the bubble began forming, but roughly five million years ago, it drifted into the bubble's interior during its journey around the galaxy. Now we reside within this expansive 1,000 light year wide structure, observing active star formation on the bubble's surface, while the interior remains surprisingly empty. This discovery affirms a decades-old theory suggesting that supernovae can compress gas, creating fertile grounds for star birth. This led astronomers to think that if this phenomenon happened here, how widespread might these cosmic bubbles be across the galaxy? A group of astronomers has now charted the bubble, uncovering an unusual asymmetry in its shape and temperature distribution, as well as identifying a mysterious tunnel-like structure pointing toward the constellation Centaurus our local cosmic neighborhood just got a whole lot more intriguing. Imagine a fish trying to figure out the shape of its tank while staying right in the middle. It wouldn't be something very easy for the fish to do unless we give it human-like intellect and the right tools. Enter the right tool, the Max Planck Institute of Extraterrestrial Physics powerful space-based X-ray telescope called Erosita. One major advantage of Erosita is where it operates in space. 
Earth's atmosphere stretches surprisingly far, with a vast halo of hydrogen, called the geocorona, extending up to 100 times Earth's radius, which is more than 370,000 miles from the surface. E. Rosita is mounted on a space observatory stationed about 930,000 miles from Earth. At this gravitationally stable point, where the poles of Earth and the Sun balance, the X-ray observatory is uniquely positioned as the first to capture X-ray images of the sky from completely beyond the reach of our planet's glowing geocorona. Using the telescope, the researchers found that the bubble is expanding more vertically, away from the galactic plane, rather than along the horizontal plane. This makes sense because vertical directions face less resistance compared to horizontal ones. The researchers found that the uneven temperature distribution in the bubble matched the supernova theory for its formation, suggesting that stars may have indeed been exploding in our region relatively recently, as close as a few million years ago. What we didn't know was the existence of an interstellar tunnel towards Centaurus, which carves a gap in the cooler interstellar medium, says astrophysicist Michael Freiberg of the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. This region stands out in stark relief thanks to the much improved sensitivity of E. Rosita and a vastly different surveying strategy compared to Rosat. We still don't know exactly what the tunnel leads to, but several intriguing objects lie in its path, such as the Gum Nebula, another neighboring bubble, and several molecular clouds. The team, however, suspects that the Centaurus tunnel in the LHB may just be a part of a network of hot gas tunnels that bore their way between the cool gas of the interstellar medium between stars. It's possible that this tunnel could be part of a larger, interconnected network of hot bubbles and cosmic tunnels that make up the galaxy, an idea first proposed in 1974 but lacked significant evidence until now. Another interesting fact is that the Sun must have entered the LHB a few million years ago, a short time compared to the age of the Sun, which is 4.6 billion years. Another scientist added, it is purely coincidental that the Sun seems to occupy a relatively central position in the LHB as we continuously move through the Milky Way. This new finding is exciting because now we might be on the verge of uncovering this network, which could provide valuable insights into the recent history and structure of our galaxy. What do you guys think? Comment below to let me know. Also, what do you guys think of the marathon? Please let us know if you'd like to see it more often. And don't forget to subscribe to Territory, because this is your space.